Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new edition of the Word of the Day podcast, coming to you, as always, pre-recorded from the RAV4 Studios. My name is Jamie Silva, I am your host, and I think the time has come once again to pleasantly explain another useful word. Today's word is the adjective gratuitous. In my opinion, this means unnecessary, uncalled for, or over the top. So, if something is gratuitous, that suggests no one asked for it, or perhaps no one asked for that much of it. The online definition more or less agrees, reading, quote, uncalled for, lacking good reason, or unwarranted, unquote. And I should also note here that the adverb gratuitously is also super common, and it just means in a gratuitous fashion. Now, I think one important thing to keep in mind for gratuitous is that the things it refers to are probably fine, even great in some contexts, or in certain limited quantities. Like, stuff that is always bad all the time in any amount isn't gratuitous, it's just bad. You probably wouldn't refer, for example, to a gratuitous bout of bronchitis or a gratuitous nest of angry hornets. Even the relatively common phrase, gratuitous insults, fits this model, even though it might seem like insults are always a negative. This may be so, but sometimes, many would say, they're still justified, they're commensurate with the offense you've suffered. And in your righteous indignation, some choice invectives or harsh words would be fitting and appropriate. It is when the insults are unjustified, excessive, unwarranted, or otherwise uncalled for, maybe because they needlessly escalate a conflict or cause offense, only then, I think, could you properly call them gratuitous. Now, here's one example of what gratuitous looks like in this overkill or too much of a good thing sense. A time-honored use of gratuitous is in the context of describing movies or TV shows that pander to their viewers with lots of things audiences stereotypically enjoy. Maybe lots of action, explosions, emotional confrontations, perhaps a random love triangle, stuff like that. These are basically fine things, right? And lots of great movies have them. But occasionally, it may seem like the directors or writers or whoever just said to themselves, you know, what this story needs is a little more hand-to-hand -hand combat. So how about we put in a couple scenes in which our hero single-handedly defeats a small army of hitmen who, despite being armed to the teeth and presumably aware of the protagonist's world-class martial arts skills after he incapacitates the first half dozen or so of them, they still insist on fighting him at close quarters, just one or two at a time with only their fists, rather than, you know, simply tasing him from like 20 feet away. Sorry, I think I sort of buried the point there, but, like, if this fight scene added nothing to the plot, right, it served neither to shed light on the main character's troubled past, nor to illustrate his development as a lethal fighting force, nor even to put him a step closer to finding and destroying his evil arch-rival, then it's safe to say, I think, that that was a gratuitous scene, or that the movie featured gratuitous violence. Conversely, if that violent scene had served some fundamental purpose, rather than seemingly existing for its own sake, then it wouldn't qualify as gratuitous. Instead, it would be called for or warranted, and have a good reason for existing. Now, longtime listeners might also recognize gratuitous from a recurring segment on this very show. That segment is called Gratuitous Observations About Things, and I always introduce it by saying I'm going to reflect or opine on whatever suits my fancy, whether you wanted to hear what I think about it or not. That last part is where the gratuitous angle comes in, because no one is asking for these observations. Like, I receive no emails in the Word of the Day inbox pleading that I share my thoughts on, say, why you can convert the name Will to William, but not the name Bill to Billiam. Or, perhaps, what's going on in the fascinating field of omnomnomonomics, or whatever the case may be. As with most opinions, people generally aren't all that interested in any but their own, which makes mine more or less uncalled for. Obviously, this is mildly tongue-in-cheek, because if the observations are fun and interesting, then you won't mind hearing them. But still, you didn't call for them, so in that sense, they're pretty gratuitous. Speaking of which, in my opinion, the phrase uncalled for is sort of an intrinsic understatement. Literally, it just indicates that you didn't ask for something, but got it anyway. The implication, though, is that whatever you got or were exposed to was objectionable or excessive in some way. Strictly speaking, though, it shouldn't have to be like that. Like, if a pizza got misdelivered to your house, that would literally be uncalled for. You never called and ordered a pizza. But it's still a wonderful thing. However, you'll never hear people describe unexpected good things as uncalled for, only bad things. In the same way, while theoretically gratuitous could describe things that no one asked for but everyone still appreciates, in practice it only refers to stuff they don't appreciate, or would prefer much less of. Thus, referring to a gratuitous $20 bill you found on the sidewalk wouldn't quite work. Whereas, say, referring to a gratuitously loud PA system at a minor league baseball stadium works just fine. 
Like, you get what they're trying to do, they just want all the fans to be able to hear the now batting announcements and the music and the games between innings. But if they blare it at like a bajillion decibels, nearly deafening the attendees who just want to watch a baseball game in relative peace and quiet, it can sometimes be a little bit too much, a bit unreasonable or uncalled for. In a word, gratuitous. Now, come to think of it, I may need to amend my initial comments about how gratuitous should never refer to things that are obviously bad in any context or in any quantity. The exception here, I think, is settings where you're being kind of wry or sarcastic. Like, for example, if you were to say, I need another maple glazed donut like I need a hole in the head, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. So, gratuitous, used perhaps in conjunction with an eye roll or a chagrined smile, is totally fine in these situations, as long as you're using the proper tone. You might say, for example, that my day was going badly enough before a gratuitous gust of wind blew away my favorite velvet top hat. Obviously, this is quite an unfortunate accident. So, gratuitous here conveys kind of a wry, well that sure was uncalled for, kind of mean. Okay, it's now time to dip into the etymology of gratuitous. And this comes from a Latin word that's spelled almost exactly the same, and was probably pronounced about the same as well, and it means done for free, spontaneous, or voluntary. Similarly, the Latin word gratis, among other things, meant as a favor, and of course, one does not charge for a favor. Merriam-Webster actually draws the link between this word, gratis, and the concept of party favors, which usually take the form of like a complimentary little bag with a couple goodies or souvenirs inside. Party favors are obviously provided to guests for free, which does match the Latin sense of things being done for free. And in fact, there are lots of languages today where the word gratis, in some pronunciation or other, means free or for free. It's like this in Spanish, Italian, French, German, Dutch, Portuguese, Czech, and probably many more. English adopted the word directly, such that you can say, buy one gallon of detergent and get a second gratis. The word gratuitous itself actually has a secondary meaning that I didn't focus on here because it's much less interesting, but just so you know, it means given or done free of charge. Unsurprisingly then, a tip, uh, the kind you'd leave at a restaurant, is known as a gratuity. Leaving a tip, though expected, is technically voluntary, and in that sense, it is done for free, as like a favor or gift, a way of implying that you were so overwhelmed by the tastiness of the food and the attentiveness of the staff that you felt compelled to offer this additional compensation, this gratuity. Now, all this talk about free stuff, uh, voluntary gifts, and party favors still relates to the main definition of gratuitous that we're talking about today, and that, again, is essentially uncalled for or unwarranted, because gratuitous things are also, in a way, provided at no charge. They're extra, they're served up freely, and often in copious amounts, and therein frequently lies the problem. Providing too much of something, or providing something where it doesn't belong, is typically unwelcome. This reminds me a little bit of the word inordinate, which we featured in episode 7, and according to Merriam-Webster, means exceeding reasonable limits. In the same vein, you could refer to a gratuitously large amount of something, or a gratuitously big trophy at the awards show, or a gratuitously piercing French horn solo during the marching band concert. The connotation is that a large trophy would have been fine, but not that large. Or a somewhat piercing horn solo would have been perfectly acceptable, but that one was just too much. Okay, let's now take a look at some examples of gratuitous in everyday conversation or writing. Example number one. On the whole, Reginald enjoyed the opera he attended, but he did think the non-stop tragedy and betrayal and thwarted romance was a little gratuitous, as if it was meant to toy with his emotions rather than engage his intellect. Maybe, he mused, I should write a less melodramatic opera, something fresh and unique, where like maybe a bunch of young, fun-loving, and quirky people mostly just sit around and laugh and scheme together in a coffee shop or in a shared apartment. Except, of course, it would all still be sung and it would definitely be in Italian. Example number two. The teacher handed Allison's history essay back with what Allison considered to be the rather gratuitous remark that if she had taken the time to read the assigned material, perhaps the War of 1812 would have inspired more than just a half a page of reflections. Example number three comes from the book Silas Marner by George Eliot. And here, he, or actually she, because George Eliot was just a pen name used by the true author by the name of Mary Ann Evans, Um, In this spot, Elliot slash Evans is describing the unnecessarily exuberant behavior of someone who has had a bit too much to drink. Quote, The door opened, and a thick-set, heavy-looking young man entered, with the flushed face and gratuitously elated bearing which mark the first stage of intoxication. Unquote. And elated, by the way, just means ecstatic or overjoyed. Well, that'll do it for the examples and for today's show. 
We hope you enjoyed it and that you found this word to be useful rather than gratuitously fancy or obscure. And since this show comes to you for free, it is gratuitous in that respect, might we ask that as a small recompense, you rate and review it on iTunes, which takes just a minute and helps new listeners find the show. All right, this is Jamie Silva saying so long from the Rav4 Studios. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.